Hello, everyone. My name is Marcy Samuelson, and I am Marketing Manager for the Developer Initiative here at Oracle. Thank you for attending today's Tech Classroom Connecting to Oracle Autonomous Database with Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and Azure. Before we get started, I would like to review a couple of housekeeping items. The webcast console you are looking at can be completely customized. You can resize and move any of the windows that you have open. At the bottom of your audience console, there are multiple widgets that you can use. If you have any questions during the workshop, you can enter your question in the Q&A area and submit your question. We have a number of Oracle experts on the call that are ready to help you. If you experience audio or screen issues, please make sure the audio is turned on in the media widget and your browser tab, or press F5 to refresh your screen. This webcast will be made available on demand after this live event. You will be able to access from the same link as the link you use to access this live event. Again, thank you for joining the Tech Classroom Connecting to Oracle Autonomous Database with Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and Azure. This webcast will be presented by Christian Shea and Alex Key, both senior principal product managers for Oracle and work on the product.net and Windows. At this point, I will turn it over to Christian. Thanks, Marcy. Hi, everybody. I'm Christian Shea, and um, I'm going to be uh, starting this talk to um, introduce to you some of the features that we have with Visual Studio and Autonomous Database and Visual Studio Code with Autonomous Database. And then after I do that, I'll hand it off to my colleague, Alex Key, and he's going to talk about the uh, Oracle Cloud Azure Partnership and then he'll um, do a demo for you of using Azure with Autonomous Database. And then we'll go ahead and take your questions. So without further ado, let's get going. So if you are a Visual Studio developer, um, Oracle has some great tools available for you called Oracle Developer Tools for Visual Studio. These are available to you free on the Visual Studio Marketplace. And they have a lot of great features. Uh, the product's been around for, I don't know, 15 years maybe. And we have a lot of features in there. But recently, we've added a lot of features for the Oracle Cloud. So you can explore Oracle Database and Oracle Autonomous Database and perform lifecycle management on your Autonomous Database, as you can see in the screenshot here. And then there's a whole bunch of other features that are really useful for Oracle developers like designing designers and PO SQL editing and debugging, script editing and generation, and so on. And um, these uh, features are um, available to you for free from this product. And um, I actually have created a, a blog that you can see right there. Um, if you're interested in doing a step-by-step walkthrough of some of the newer features that we have. Um, now, we're going to give you a demo of that right now. So let's switch over to my Visual Studio 2009 instance. Okay, so... If you want to install um, Oracle Developer Tools for Visual Studio, it's real easy. You just go to the Extensions menu and click on Manage Extensions. And when you're in there, um, just type in Oracle Developer Tools to search for it. And, and you can see that it will show up right here, Oracle Developer Tools for Visual Studio. And you can download it and install it really quickly. I already have it installed, so I don't need to do that. But um, uh, now once you open up, um, once you install it, you'll notice that it has modified your server explorer. And it's added a Oracle Cloud infrastructure node next to the Azure node. So uh, this does what you might expect. It gives you access to your Oracle Cloud infrastructure uh, features. And um, so some of the things you can do is if you don't have a cloud account, you can sign up for one, but also you can add um, an account. You can connect to your Oracle Cloud by adding a new account entry, which I'll do right now. So the um, add new account entry dialog 
is in front of you right now. And um, uh, what you can see here is that there's a lot of fields that it needs to be able to, a lot of information it needs to be able to connect your Oracle Cloud. So we, you don't wanna type that in by hand every time you connect. So the best way to do it is to create a configuration file and a uh, PEM file, a um, encryption file, a key file. And uh, this is made very easily by something called the OCI CLI tool. So we actually uh, have a link here that takes you to a web page uh, that shows you how to set up your config file and your key file um, very easily using the OCI CLI tool. So you click on that, you follow these instructions, and when you're done, um, you load that configuration file, which I'll do right now. So I have a config file already created. And I'll click OK. And see, you can see it pre-populated pre the dialog. And um, now I need to choose the compartment I'm going to be working out of in my cloud. So this is mine. And just like that, I'm connected to the Oracle Cloud. So if you take a look here, we, we have um, a, uh, a few nodes here, the data warehouse node. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see better. But um, we have the um, uh, autonomous transaction processing databases node and the uh, data warehouses node. So uh, what are some of the things that you can do here? Um, let's take a look at some of the menus. So uh, first of all, um, if you decide that you want to be in a different compartment, you don't have to reconnect and recreate. You just click on compartments. And if you want to shift regions, it's very easy. You just change the region. All right. So uh, let's see um, if we want to create a database, what do we need to do? So um, there's a menu, obviously, create new. So you can see the create new dialog here. So I'm going to uh, give it a name. So let's call it uh, test 99. All right. And um, so Oracle gives you um, some free instances of the Oracle database called always free. So we'll check that off to get our free instance. And I'll put in the password. And there you have it. So um, now, as it turns out, I already have an always free instance. You, I always have already have my allocation of always free instances used up. So I'm not going to check that in this case. But you can very easily uh, check this and take advantage of your always free instance. So I'm going to create this. And as you can see, it started to uh, create the instance. You can see by the little yellow um, circle. So um, Rather than wait for that to create, I already have an always free instance created. You can tell that it's always free by the little green star. Uh, we do that in case you, like me, have used up your free instances and want to go and delete some of them. It makes it very easily to, easy to just look at it and know that that's your free instance. All right, so um, the free instance, um, has quite a few different, um, the, the instances that are listed here have quite a few uh, menus that are available to you. Let me move that over here. Maybe zoom in on it so you can see a little better. And so we're gonna go through this right now and show you what each of these do. Okay, so um, starting with clone, you can very easily make a copy, a clone, of your instance by choosing clone. And that's really easy. All you have to do is give it a new name, really, and provide a password as before and tell her whether it's always free. You can also start, stop, and terminate your instance very easily. And you'll see the colors change when you do, when you do so. You can update the credentials, which basically lets you change the password. And you can even take a free instance and upgrade it to a paid instance. Now, in order to actually, right now we're managing the instance. You can see some of the items here that are only available for uh, non always free instances like scaling and change the license type and restore from a backup. But, um, but this is management 
of your uh, instance. What if you want to connect to it and explore the schema? So to do that, you need to um, do something called create data connection. So what this is going to do is create a data connection in the data connections node and allow you to explore your schema. So let's do that. Now, um, as part of creating a connection, it's going to automatically download your credentials files. Credentials files tell um, a client or Visual Studio how to connect, what the connection information is to connect to it, and also provides security related things like wallets. And this is all done seamlessly for you. You don't have to do anything manually. It just comes down automatically and you're ready to connect. So let's say continue. And I already have some of the files here, so I'm gonna replace them. And now you can see it's opened up the connection dialog. So you can see that it's copied the files here to my, my always free directory, both the TNS alias fi uh, file and the wallet file here. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my HR user. If you don't have an HR user, you can connect your admin, admin user. And I'll say, okay, to connect. All right, so now you can see that I have a data connections node. Okay, now I'm going to click on the data connections node. And you can see that I have um, my tables and views and, and everything that's in this cloud database. You can see that it is uh, always free high that we uh, that we've created. And uh, now Oracle Developer Tools has had a set, has had a set of features that have been available uh, for over uh, almost 15 years. So it lets you do things like look at your table data and so on. So I can, for example, double click on the employees table and it will open up a grid that shows me my data. Uh, furthermore, if I want to, I can um, view my PL SQL packages. So for example, I have a uh, package or a mag here, which is um, a prime number routine in PL SQL and I can open it up and view my PL SQL in uh, the Oracle database in the cloud and edit it here and do all the things that um, you're used to doing in Visual Studio, but with Visual, with PLs, with PL SQL. So this is uh, Oracle Developer Tools for Visual Studio. Go ahead and give it a try, create a always free instance and give it a shot and um, get started using the Oracle Cloud. All right, now we're gonna talk about Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code happens to be the most popular development environment today uh, for developers of all, uh, all stripes. So um, it's, uh, it's available um, on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. It's a cross-platform development environment and Oracle supports it. We have a set, we have an extension, just like you saw before, but it's, on the um, Visual Studio Code Marketplace. And um, similar to the extension you saw before, it, 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 it extends Visual Studio Code to give you Oracle functionality. So Visual Studio Code is wildly popular with uh, developers. Probably you use it, I would suspect. And people really like to use it for Python, C Sharp, Java, et cetera. So what we've done is similar to what you just saw, we've added um, an Oracle Database Explorer to um, Visual Studio Code. And we've added features like uh, editing and executing SQL and PL SQL, downloading data results, and providing a formatter, formatter for that. And um, we've also got some other cool features as well, like autocomplete and IntelliSense. So all this is available for free on the Visual Studio Code Marketplace. And I'll show you how to get it and how to use it right now. So let's go to the demo. So here is a instance of Visual Studio Code that I have. 
Um, so um, again, this is a free um, IDE and it's cross-platform. It runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And uh, Oracle has an extension for it. So all you gotta do to install it is click on the extensions icon and then just search on Oracle or maybe Oracle Developer Tools. And then you can see it here. So um, let me expand this so you can see it a little better. But um, so this is where you would download it, install it. And uh, just a few things I'd like to highlight here. We do have a quick start. This link here will take you to a quick start page that will give you a very quick overview of how to do very specific tasks, how to install, how to update, how to connect, et cetera. So I highly recommend that you click on the quick start. The other thing is we do have a developer tools forum that you can click on and post your questions to us. All right, so um, once you have this installed, uh, which I already have, uh, what you will find is that it adds an icon over here uh, for Oracle Explorer. So if you click on the little database icon for Oracle Explorer, there's not much there right now because we haven't connected to anything, but you can click the little plus icon to create a connection and it'll open up a connection dialog. So uh, we're going to be connecting to the cloud, so we need to use a TNS alias. Now, those same files that I downloaded with Visual Studio are still on my machine. In fact, if you take a look here, they are here inside the My Always Free uh, folder. So um, they're still there. So we're gonna use those to show you how to connect um, to um, a database in the cloud. So I need to change the TNS admin location to My Always Free. I'm going to need to use a wallet file because that's how you connect to the cloud. So I'll, I'll get it from my always free as well. And it gives me a list of my instances. So you can see I'm going to choose high. And that's about it. Now I just need to provide the username and password as before. Okay, looks good to me. Let's create the connection. Okay, and you can see that it has shown up here in the side, so I can close this dialog. So here we are in the Explorer. Now when I click on it, it's going to expand it. Let me zoom in on that for you. And you can see that uh, it's similar to the tree control we were looking at in Visual Studio. You can examine your employees table. So um, you can see the, the various pieces of metadata about the employees table. And you can right click and say, show data to view the data in the employees table. Now, um, uh, this is uh, the display of the data. And we also have an interesting feature where you can save the data as a file in either CSV or JSON format. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to fetch and save all rows. And now you can see I can get my data in JSON format. Okay. Uh, we also expose procedures and functions as well. So I have a a function that I got from uh, Steve Feuerstein, uh, his website um, for PL SQL. Let me close these to keep things clean here. Um, so you can also edit uh, functions, packages, and procedures and, and view the PL SQL directly here in the code editor. So um, you can see that I have a function inside the database that takes a, a name of a table and then does a query on it and returns the cursor. So let's modify that. I have a little snippet here. Let's add the depth table to this little piece of PL SQL. Here. 
we go. And all I need to do is right click and say, save to database. And once I've done that, um, it's now saved to the database and I can right click and say run to actually test the function. So let's see if that made it in there. I'll say run. And it will open up a uh, test bed basically. So there's my input value here. So let's try depth because we just added that. Say okay. And you can see that it has completed and it has a fetch button to fetch the results for the cursor. So you can see I've fetched it. And similar to the other display that you saw, there's the output of the department name. Okay, so this is using the Explorer, but probably what you're really interested in is how do I write my own SQL scripts? How do I do that? So uh, that's real easy. You just press um, the context key F1, and that will bring up the, the menu here. And you just choose develop new, PL, new SQL or PL SQL. And when it prompts you with a, um, when it prompts you, it'll prompt you for a, um, if you wanna use an existing connection. So let's go ahead and use the connection that we have over here in the Explorer. And um, so if you take a look, um, uh, a few things. It's already associated this file that you have open with the Oracle um, extension. That's great. Um, it shows you down at the, um, I'm down here in the, in the status bar. It shows you the uh, connection that you're connecting to. And um, it, uh, and that's basically, this is the important part, just to make sure that it, you, know, you know that it's associated with our extension. So now that you've done that, you can start typing some SQL. So let's say select um, let's say last name. So you may notice that it's actually doing autocomplete here. Select last name from employees, maybe employees. So it, you saw the autocomplete there, it made it um, uh, much easier to select the things I was interested in. And now in the menu, you can say execute SQL or use the um, shortcut key. So when I do that, it does what you would expect. It opens up that, uh, that data display that we have. Uh, so let's go and try another one. Let's say uh, I have that Aura Mag package over here that you saw in the other demo. Um, so let's use that one. Let's just type select uh, or a mag prime number tester. So you can see is prime and let's give it a prime number 13 from dual. Okay. And we can execute that. And you can see it gives a value of one, meaning yes, it's a prime. And let's try one more. Let's say select. Um, by the way, we do have, um, we also have um, code snippets. So if you type Oracle, you get all these different code snippets to help you remember uh, if you forget like how to, um, how to delete rows in a, a table or something like that. You can use that uh, code snippet, but uh, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, select, let's say select star from and now let's suppose, you know, there's a lot of different things here that we can choose from, but suppose we know the schema that we're interested in. So I can say HR dot, and now this really narrows things down here because now it's just showing me um, the tables that I have access to. So let's say departments. So that's called IntelliSense. So now we have this. Now, um, uh, I've been executing individual SQLs, but you can also just say execute all to execute all of them at once. Let's do that, execute all. And you can see that it'll kind of group them. So select last name from employees first, and then down here, um, select is prime from dual, and finally select star from HR departments. 
And that's not all the features that we have, but that's all I really have time for. Um, one thing I will comment is that, um, is that this is the Oracle Explorer for the database. Uh, we connect it to an individual database. Now, what you saw in Visual Studio, which is the Cloud Explorer, um, that part is coming. So possibly by the time you watch this, if you upgrade to the latest, it may already be there. So, um, but at the time of this recording, we don't currently have the Cloud Explorer yet. But, um, but uh, very soon we will, so check, check online and eventually you'll see a similar Cloud Explorer here as to what you saw me show you in Visual Studio. So, um, so with that, let me turn it over to Alex Key to talk to you about the Oracle Cloud and Azure partnership. Thanks, Christian. Uh, so I'm going to talk for the uh, next few minutes about uh, the Oracle Cloud and Microsoft Azure partnership, and then do a demonstration of what you can do uh, to use the, uh, the Azure Cloud with Oracle Autonomous Database. So give you an example of a, of a web application, uh, deploying that web application from Visual Studio into Azure, and then uh, connecting to the Oracle Autonomous Database. So it's cloud to cloud connectivity to show you how uh, things can interoperate in the cloud between, the, um, between our two companies. So let's first talk a little bit about the partnership that Oracle and Microsoft announced a, a year ago, uh, mid-2019. Uh, it had uh, several main tenants, um, one of which is that Oracle and Microsoft have come to the realization, or we realized this uh, a while ago, but um, we've um, come to the agreement that um, you know, our clouds should interoperate better because more and more of our mutual customers are using our technologies in the cloud. Uh, the Oracle Autonomous Database is uh, getting popular, uh, Oracle applications, and then you know, people are using Microsoft technologies on Azure. And because of that, uh, we felt putting these two clouds, uh, uh, having better interoperability would be important for our mutual customers to make it easier for them, to make them more efficient so that they can get more work done. So the, some of the things we, we have done to further that is one, as part of this partnership, we are building direct interconnects between our two clouds. And these direct interconnects are private, low latency, high bandwidth, dedicated connections between our two clouds. And, and they are geographic, and these interconnects have to be geographically close to ensure low latency and fast performance. So obviously, the farther you away are away from each, each data center is from each other, the, the longer the latency just because of distance. So we've, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about where we've done the interconnect, but we started this uh, in the middle of last year, and we've I've been bringing up different regions and different, uh, different areas of, of uh, in those regions, uh, and we've been doing it throughout based on customer demand. Uh, another key tenet of our partnership is unified identity management and access. So, um, and this not only extends to uh, cloud to cloud, but also on-premise Active Directory. So that if you sign up onto Active Directory on-premise, you can connect to the Oracle Cloud without having to sign up, sign in again. Uh, same if you if you sign into Azure, you'll be able to connect to Oracle Cloud, and of course, we connect to Oracle Cloud you'll be signed into Azure and on-premise AD. So it's all, um, all, all interlinked. And this makes management of users much easier. Uh, it makes a single sign-on, um, it makes single sign-on possible, which is easier for the end user as well. So it really simplifies how users and well as the, the management users are within the cloud and on-premise. And then the last major uh, item, at least when it comes to um, autonomous database and developers, is collaborative support uh, between Oracle and Microsoft. So that if you have a problem using uh, uh, Microsoft software on the Oracle Cloud or Oracle software in the Microsoft Cloud or the Interconnect, you can call either one of us. And, and if we find the issue involves uh, working with the other vendor, we will then bring in the other vendor without the customer having to open up a, a separate ticket with that the other vendor that way it's, it's much easier to work and we have lines of communication so that ensure good uh, customer service for you as you're trying to use in both clouds so that in a nutshell is the partnership and uh, over time we've been uh, making uh, new more and more data centers available through our direct interconnect 
the single sign-on functionality was there from day one. Collaborative support was there from day one. So uh, one of the, the remaining things is bringing more data centers online that have this direct interconnect. So again, this is the high throughput, low latency private network that we have between uh, Azure data centers and Oracle data centers. And right now what we have available between the Oracle Cloud and Azure regions are the US East, which is the Washington DC area, uh, United Kingdom South, which is the London area, uh, Canada in the Toronto area, and Central Europe uh, in uh, the A Amsterdam area. So those four regions are now online. You'll be able to um, um, uh, create a, a interconnect from Oracle, which uh, uh, we call that our fast connect. And, you, and with that fast connect, you can set up uh, um, a connection to Azure. And Azure, on the Azure side, you set up the express route and the express route hooks up to that Oracle fast connect on the Oracle side. So that, that's how you get the dedicated connection. Uh, fast connect is just you know, Oracle's branding for this uh, dedicated interconnect and uh, express route is Microsoft's Azure branding of it. Uh, so those are the four regions we have now. We plan to add uh, uh, regions in the future. In the uh, short to medium term, uh, Japan should be coming on uh, in the Tokyo area, should be coming on, on shortly. Uh, it may be even by the time of uh, this call, you'll have it there. Uh, U.S. West is another one we're planning, and a U.S. government one as well. So uh, we're, we're bringing these data centers and regions online based on customer demand. So if there's a region that we haven't covered, make sure to let your uh, Azure rep or your Oracle rep know uh, so that we can work with uh, our counterparts to, to get those, those regions up next. So we, we, purely, we purely focus on where the demand is to start bringing up these regions. So letting us know is the best way to get your region up and running. So now that I've kind of introduced the, the partnership, let me talk about, or let me demo, I should say, how to get your uh, Azure web app, for example, to talk to your Oracle database. Uh, we think that one of the most common ways that uh, customers will want to use Oracle Azure, uh, sorry, Oracle and at Oracle Cloud and Azure together is through, say, you have an ASP.NET website and you want to talk to your Oracle Autonomous Database, um, so I'm going to show you a demo of how to do that. I'm going to ha I have a kind of a pre-built uh, ASP.NET website set up. Um, I'll show you a little bit about uh, what's going on inside this uh, website, and then we're going to use that to connect to the Oracle Autonomous Database. We're going to use the same um, uh, 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 Autonomous Database that Christian was using, same exact one. So we're going to connect to HR and when retrieve the uh, some data from that. So. Let's go to my Visual Studio here. And so here we are in Visual Studio. Um, I've got a very simple web app here. So it's just one page. Uh, Autonomous Manage ODP is the next page. I've made that my default page, so that'll come up as the first page. It's my, it'll, it'll be there as soon as the website launches. And let's take a look at the C-sharp code to see what we have here. So what I've done is I brought in uh, ODP.net managed from uh, NuGet here, we can see it here. I've, uh, and, uh, and you can do this also with uh, uh, .NET Core as well, although the, you'll be using the ODP.NET Core provider, but here I'm just using manage, manage ODP.NET. And then we just we have to connect to the Oracle Autonomous Database, so I provide the username, my password, uh, and my data source. The, so the my always free that you remember Christian using, I'm gonna connect to that as well. And once I do that, I open up the connection uh, with the um, connection. Well, I create a connection object, I should say. I create a command object, and then I open up the connection. I provide the command text. So we're just gonna select the uh, employee's uh, first name and last name from all the employees. Uh, we're, we're just gonna read the first data entry. Uh, so we execute the SQL statement, we read it, and then we just output it to a text box on the screen, the first name and the last name, who the first employee is, and then we end, just to demonstrate that we're retrieving uh, data. So, um, so what do I need from here? Uh, so now that we have uh, the web page kind of set up, let's take a look at our web config. In our web config, uh, most of these entries were created when I uh, installed the NuGet package. It'll update your web.config with 
uh, what uh, the management OD, managed ODP.net configuration information. So most of this is uh, auto-generated for you. But the one thing I added were these set of lines, these uh, settings inside the uh, uh, ODP.net area of the config file. So I've, these are two settings, TNS underscore admin and wallet underscore location. And what these values do is um, tell ODP.net where to find their TNS names and SQLnet.org files, and then also where to find the wallet, because you need more than just a password to connect to uh, three other autonomous database at this time. You're gonna, you need a wallet as well, so we need to tell uh, ODP.net where to find a wallet. And I have it here locally, so I'm just gonna run this locally first, and then we're gonna deploy it and change these entries to, uh, to where those files will reside on the web server uh, in Azure. So just uh, just so that you understand what we're doing. Okay, so now that we have that, let's take a look at our project. We don't have any, um, uh, we don't have those TNS, SQL Net, and wallet entries, so we have to add that to the project so that we're able to connect to the autonomous database. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to the tools, and you can see these are the, the same tools that Christian was using. Um, and then we have the My Always Free here. We have the Test 99 that Christian just created. So if I right click and uh, download credential files, I can download it to a file in my, uh, in my project. So I'm just gonna copy this name here. This is my Oracle. I created an Oracle directory in the project, so I'm gonna copy it there. And we're gonna download it into there. And let's make sure that happened. And we can see that happen. So we now see all the files there. That's good. And then let's add those key files to our project. So add existing item. And we really just need these three files in the case of ODP.net. Uh, some of these are for, you know, if you have a Java app or something like that. For ODP.net, we just need the cwwallet.sso and then the sqlnet.ora and the TNS names. And you'll see inside the TNS name that Aura, it has the my always free entry that we're gonna to refer to and the connectivity information to that. So that the tools just made it really easy for me to get those files. I didn't have to do much there. And I am pretty I think I'm pretty set. So I should be able to run this from my desktop. I'm gonna first run this from my desktop to the autonomous database, make sure everything's working correctly, and then we're gonna uh, deploy it to Azure and get it working. So uh, I'm gonna hit uh, Control F5, get it to run, just to verify we've got a, a working app. And we'll see if it works. So right now it's uh, bringing up the uh, uh, web server locally and going to the database and retrieving. And the first employee's name is Ellen Abel, which is what we expected. So that's great, it works. And if you're wondering where I got this source code, uh, it's, in, it's on our NuGet page, uh, sorry, in our GitHub page, not NuGet page, GitHub page. So you can, you can use similar, it's not exact same code because I'm retrieving from HR, but uh, the code here uh, just retrieves a select um, banner from version, uh, V dollar version but it, it'll always work and uses the admin, but you can, you can modify it as you want, but it just makes it way to experience. So that's just, if you want to uh, try this code out on your own. So let's go ahead and deploy it, because now we know it works on premise. We want to deploy it to Azure, which is what we're interested in. So before we do that, remember in our web config that we uh, modified uh, the TNS admin value and the wallet location. Well, this is on my local machine, and obviously, oh, I didn't want to delete too much of it. On my local, this is on my local machine, and on my local machine, I am. Um, this directory exists, but it will not exist on my uh, web server. So, what I need to do, uh, yeah, just trying to remember something here. Okay, what I need to do is set the web server location. Uh, locally, when I say locally on Azure, that will host uh, that will host these files. So uh, when I deploy, I'm going to deploy the project, and then and as part of the project, it's going to keep this Oracle uh, subdirectory, 
And in that subdirectory off the, the uh, web server uh, home, uh, it will be able to have find these files. So I'm going to set it off the uh, relative to that home directory. It'll be on the Oracle subdirectory. So these files will be there and they'll be able to find it if I set it like this. So now that I've done this, let me uh, just uh, build it. And let me deploy, or I should say publish first, and then it'll deploy all the files. So we're going to create uh, an app service in Azure. An app service will allow me to create uh, a web app. So we'll create new, we'll create a profile. It'll use my uh, Microsoft Azure account. It'll give me a, a name uh, for it that is not being used. Uh, it'll use a resource group I've already set. And here it'll set a hosting plan. We're gonna use a different one. Um, so we'll use one in the US West too, because that's where uh, my resource group is and where it's closer to me. And one important thing is when you're using wallets with the uh, autonomous database or in general, uh, you'll need to use the basic level of the Azure website or, 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 or higher. You won't be able to use the free or shared version because you'll need the file access. You'll need to be able to set the website load user profile um, setting in IS, and those are only available with the basic level of service or higher. So we say okay, and everything looks good. So we will then create, and now it will go and create this uh, app service in Azure. And then once it creates that app service, uh, we'll go ahead and publish, which will then deploy our files to Azure. Uh, and then we should be almost ready, set to run. Uh, we'll need to, uh, once it gets, once those files, all the web files get deployed to Azure, we'll just need to configure uh, the fact that my, uh, my homepage is uh, unconventionally named, so we, gotta make, we have to make that the default page. And then the second thing we'll need to do is to uh, enable the ability for IS to use wallets. So we're going to have to change the or, or add a set uh, app setting website underscore load underscore user underscore profile and enable it, set it to one to enable it. So we've just finished, um, Azure just finished creating a, uh, a web app for me. Oh, and then now we're going to deploy our files uh, from my machine to Azure. So now it'll do a web deploy of those files. So you can see it's adding directories, adding ECL paths, adding files, and uh, it's gonna try to launch it, but we're not going to uh, do that just yet because we need to, uh, we need to enable the, we need to enable the website to use the wallet. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see that all the files in my project were deployed here and everything looks like it succeeded. So let's go to the Azure console. And so I should refresh and be able to see my uh, uh, application here in my account. And let's see, yep, there it is, okay. So we see the app services here that was created. We'll click on that and then we'll go to configuration. And in this configuration, we're going to do two things as I mentioned, we will, uh, change the, we'll, we'll, we're gonna eliminate this hosting start.html because it exists and I don't want it to override my actual um, uh, 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 page, which is, let me grab the name for that page. Uh, let me go back to project and let me copy this name. Okay, here we go. That'll be the default page. And then we also need to set a new application setting, which is the uh, website load underscore user profile. And set that to one, which enables the ability to use the wallet file on the file system. So we save that. It'll, um, because you made an application setting changes, it'll bounce the, the web server. Um, so it'll take a little bit of time to do, um, not, not especially long, but uh, we still have to wait a little bit before we hit the, um, before we try to, um, whoop, I 
moved off the project or moved off the website. But it should be okay now, so we can try to browse. And there we see uh, Ellen Abel is the first employee. So what you've seen is how to quickly get started using Oracle Autonomous Database with our ODP.NET managed driver. I, I use the tools in order to get the, the WAD and the uh, connectivity information and I was quickly able to deploy. And just to, just to show that you can get a working web application very easily working with Autonomous Database. So uh, not, not quite simple to do. Um, so let's go back to the slides. And, this, and another thing I wanted to mention about it is uh, you can do this today. You don't need to use a direct interconnect uh, in order to use this functionality. Direct interconnect um, is, is used uh, you know, generally for production applications in which uh, the, you, know, the, you as a customer need very fast data access. You need um, a much more uh, uh, secure data access because it's a private connection. You don't want any of your data, even though it's encrypted, uh, that we, we use wallet so the data is encrypted but you know for extra security uh, a lot of customers want to ensure that the data never touches the internet uh, uh, the, the, so so that's why uh, a lot of folks like the direct interconnect option to do but uh, because i'm just doing a demonstration i'm doing this on on the internet so it's it's not it doesn't use that, so you can use this functionality today. You can try it out in Visual Studio, it will work for you. So I, I covered quite a bit in terms of what we can do. Um, here's some links for you that will be um, on the, the PDF that is part of this, um, of this presentation. And uh, the first link covers the announcement of what Oracle and Microsoft have done to interconnect our clouds, which I covered briefly. There's a few more aspects to, to, that, um, to that announcement. Um, um, I, I only covered kind of the main things. I think uh, most developers and those who are using Oracle Time and Database uh, would, would be uh, interested in using. Uh, and then uh, I have a blog entry with the second link, which is uh, just like this application, and it'll, it'll have pointers to the code, and also how, how I actually connected the two, the, us together and then for those who are interested in using the direct interconnect it's a, a bit involved in terms of the, the setup since you have to set up uh, interconnect on the Oracle side and the Microsoft side and then put them together uh, but it's it, it's these uh, these um, step by step portals make it pretty easy to, to set up and we show you how to set up the interconnect on the third link um, as uh, for generic applications and then if you want to set up the interconnect for a autonomous database, serverless, you can do it here. And then dedicated infrastructure, you can, that's the, the fifth link here. And lastly, if you're interested in the uh, cloud federation of Active Directory uh, with Oracle, Oracle Cloud, you can learn about it here. Uh, all these links are available on otn.oracle.com slash windows, but you can also get it from the PDF uh, that is part of this. So, some more general resources. We have our OTN uh, website that you can go to for more .NET information. Uh, most of the time, uh, almost all the, the demos we do, we provide the samples up on GitHub. So you can go to our GitHub site to grab those, uh, that sample code. We announce uh, new features all the time on, on Twitter, uh, on, our, on our handle here. And then we put videos on YouTube as well. But, if none of those resources can help, or if you have you know, questions that you want to ask directly of Oracle, you can email either I or Christian within our email addresses right here. So with that, I would like to, I'd like to open the floor up to questions. So thanks so much for that great um, presentation and demo, um, Alex and Christian. Um, at this point, we want to take any Q&A that you have. Um, so we have about 10 minutes to go. Um, there are a couple of questions in the chat. I don't know, Alex, do you want to answer some of those? And then sure. we'll take any future um, ones. 
Let's see. So in the chat, there's some a couple of questions folks had about the demos and the samples. So um, I re I sent the responses to all since there are uh, URLs and can't quite verbally tell you very easily what the URL is. So if, if you want to get a hold of this sample I worked on, uh, actually it's not exactly the same code because I'm querying against an HR schema, and uh, when you create your autonomous database, it doesn't uh, it, it won't have an HR schema pre-created, so obviously I can't give you the code for that, but um, you can obviously create your own version of HR and, and use the HR create, create scripts to, to create that, just like I did. But the, the demo code I have on GitHub in the link is we'll just do um, a select stop from V$ version so that it just returns the version, and, and that always works with the admin account. So uh, that's why I, I use that as the sample code It'll be different from that, but the concept is the same. You'll see how they connect and be, and and use the same thing. And then someone else asked for um, ASP.NET Core sample. I have a .NET Core sample for uh, for the console, um, but I don't have an ASP.NET Core one. I think I should work on one, so I'll I'll, I'll work on that in the next couple of weeks since uh, folks are asking for it. Um, uh, but uh, I'll publish that on GitHub as well on our GitHub site. So uh, that's uh, that. Let me see. Uh, there's a couple of new questions coming in. Um, uh, not sure. There's a regarding recording. If anyone can update, please. Not sure what the question is. But yeah. Let's go to the next I question. I think um, with this um, session will be is automatically recorded, and you can access it via the link um, that you use to access this live event. Um, so you can um, review. Of this session as well, using that. Oh, I see a replay. Okay. Yeah. And then the next question is: uh, Is it possible to use Python and CX Oracle in Visual Studio? Yeah, I can. Code? I can. <clears throat> I can answer that one. <clears throat> okay. So, um, uh, Visual Studio Code uh, is my, is the most popular development environment from Microsoft right now. Um, and so, in fact, Python developers really like it. It's one of the most popular for Python. So you can certainly there's a there's extensions for Python. Um, it supports Python very well. You can use CX Oracle, of course. Um, so certainly um, you can do that. And um, if you're using Python and uh, Visual Studio Code, and you want to connect to your Oracle Cloud, you want to use your Oracle database. Want to you know um, write some database um, apps using CX Oracle? Um, then that's where you would use the Oracle Developer Tools for VS Code because you know you're writing this app. You want to look at the data. You want to look at your stored procedures in PL SQL in the database to make sure they're um, correct. Uh, that's where you would use the Oracle Developer Tools for VS Code. So it just sort of gives you access to your database while you're coding in Python. Um, and lets you run scripts, lets you execute SQL, lets you look at your data. Just makes it easy, so you don't have to go use some other tool um, if you don't want to. So that's uh, so that it is definitely possible, and a lot of people are writing Python using VS Code. So good luck with that. I don't see any Alex, other questions. Go ahead, Marcy. Alex, there's a question about the Azure Oracle Cloud Partnership. You want to answer that? Again. Okay. Is it a new question or I need a refresh maybe? No, it says um, does Azure and Oracle Cloud partnership oh, okay. mean that oh, I don't no. need to sign up for Oracle Cloud if I have Azure? Um do that. Uh so okay, so there uh, the question is, yeah, so if you want to connect to the Oracle Autonomous Database, is it possible to use the free Azure App Service? Um, at this time, no, because the free Azure App Service doesn't provide um, file access uh, to the to the web server, and you need the file access because you're providing the uh, the wallet file. Uh, the wallet file um, is required uh, because all the um, well, let me t let me walk that back a little bit. As long as you need the as long as you're required to use a wallet you won't be able to use the free Azure App Service because you need that file access. So if you're using, say, uh, Oracle Autonomous Database uh, dedicate, uh, dedicated and you're not enabling um, uh, usage of, of the, the, the wallet, 
uh, then yes, if it's just pure TCP, then yes, you can use a free Azure app service against your dedicated autonomous database. Uh, but as long as you're, if you're using wallets uh, or if you're required to in the shared infrastructure example, um, then you won't be able to um, un uh, if until Oracle uh, ever releases you from uh, from having to use from having to use wallets uh, to secure your connection. So um, it's uh, or if Microsoft decides to allow file access to the free Azure app service. So that's kind of the technical reason why, you know, just based on the limitations of what's available in free service or what's available in shared or dedicated uh, Oracle autonomous database. But that's the reason why you, you have to use it. And if, if anything changes on the Microsoft side or the Oracle side, or if your configuration happens to not need the wallets, then you'll be able to use the free Azure app service. Yeah. Great. So that was a, my roundabout way of answering the question. <laughs> it's not that straightforward because there's a lot of different scenarios that could come into play. So I kind of, uh, oh, but he was asking about the free autonomous service. So the free autonomous service is actually a shared service. So that, um, for the foreseeable future, will require wallets. So you won't be able to use the free Azure app service. You'll have to use at least the basic, uh, the basic plan, which actually doesn't cost you know a whole lot. Um, um, but um, you know, it's, it's not free either. Okay. I think that's all the questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to mention that uh, when this webcast ends, you will be presented with a survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you have on this webcast to make our webcast more useful. And um, we appreciate you attending today. And Anything else you want to add, Alex or Christian, before we end? Yeah, yeah, you guys have our email addresses on one of the last slides. So if you have any questions or requests, feel free to email Christian or I. We want to hear how you're using it. Um, if there's things you'd like to see, we want to hear about those too. Uh, our job is to help you guys out to make it easier to develop with Oracle Database, with .NET, with Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and .NET Core. So we, we want to provide as much resource as we can to help you guys out and make you more productive. And I'll just say, uh, for those of you using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, uh, just remember all you have to do is go into the Visual Studio Marketplace and type in Oracle and you can find our extensions. Uh, they're very easy to find up on the Visual Studio Marketplace. Thanks, Marcy. Great. Yep. And um, there's a couple of links on the, your resource list area there. Um, one is for the, um, let me go there real quick. Uh, one is for developer tools on ODP.net. And then there's another one for OTN Windows with Azure Info. So you can go there to get additional information as well as the link to register for another event. Um, and then also the announcement um, for the Oracle and Microsoft Interconnect Cloud, as well as the slide deck. So there's a lot of information in the resource list area that you can get information on. And uh, so with that, I just wanted to say thank you for attending today, and we hope you have a great day.